church, family, and friends. Uh, welcome to another study in our uh, Sunday school lesson as we uh, continue the study in the Gospel of John. Uh, we're going to be real brief on last week's lesson. I uh, don't want to spend too much time. I think I did last week and ran a little over what we're supposed to be running. Uh, but anyway, uh, we left off in the Gospel of John chapter 5, verse 30. And just again, to real briefly cover what we had last week, uh, we saw where Jesus, he uh, made the claim to be God's son. You know, it was uh, uh, to the religious leaders, you know, they were searching for him. Uh, we saw the week before where he had healed uh, uh, the impotent man who had been uh, laying at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years or showed up for 38 years or where he was in this condition at least for 38 years. And, uh, you know, Jesus healed him on the Sabbath day, and uh, the man didn't even know who it was that healed him, and, and they saw that he was carrying his bed, which Jesus told him to take up his bed and walk and carry his bed, and and they wanted to know why he was doing something like this, because it was breaking one of their religious laws, that they had uh, made up uh, man's laws, over 600 of them that they added to uh, the Mosaic laws, and, uh, you know, he went back and the Lord found him and uh, told him not to sin again unless something worse happened to him, uh, exposing him about his condition being caused by sin, and uh, which isn't always the case, but in this case it was. And then uh, he went back and he told the religious leaders who it was that uh, healed him and they, because they were angry uh, that uh, the man told him that he didn't know the name of the guy, but he was the one that told him to pick up his bed, so now they wanted uh, this man punished, and of course now they know it's Jesus. Uh, they confronted him last week, and uh, he made uh, what they considered some profound statements of himself. Uh, you know, there in verse 17 through 20, he he gave witness of himself. Uh, you know, claimed that he was equal with the Father, uh, that he had the same uh, authority and the same powers that the Father had, and that made them really furious. And uh, uh, he claimed that uh, he quickeneth and giveth life as to whom he will, just as the father did, uh, you know, claiming equal with, you know, equal, being equal with the father. And then he made the claim that, uh, you know, that he uh, was going to judge all men, that it wouldn't be the father that would judge men, but it would be him personally, that the father give the authority to judge men. And also we saw where he said that uh, he deserved the same honor as the father. Uh, you know, if you honor the father, God the father, you've got to honor God the Son. And he said, if you don't honor the Son, then you have not honored the Father either. And then uh, there, of course, he also made a claim that he could also raise the dead, not only physically, but spiritually, uh, the same way with quickeneth, you know, giving life. He not, not, wasn't just talking about giving physical life, but giving spiritual life. And he, he made that claim as well. And of course, uh, they were furious, and uh, now they were looking for ways to... Uh, uh, we're going to see later on where they're, they're, they're going to eventually try to uh, trap him in his words, and uh, which they never will. But uh, finally, they, you know, it's it, not until it's his time, you know, when God's ready for his son to give his life for the sins of humanity, uh, when it's time, then he'll lay his life down. They're not going to take it from him. He'll lay it down willingly. Okay, so let's start uh, where we left off. Uh, again, the Gospel, if you got your Bibles, the Gospel of John, chapter 5. And we will start in verse 31. And uh, let me find my place here. i got it marked. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to finish this chapter up, and we'll be in chapter 6 next week. Uh, beginning in verse 31, and let's read down to 35, 31 through 35 first. He says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. You sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. And so, you know, we know that he's made the claim to be equal with God and to give eternal life and to be the source of life and that he's going to judge sin. And then these statements made it clear that he claimed to be divine, uh, which was almost an unbelievable claim by the, the religious leaders, uh, especially the Pharisees. Uh, but one that was supported by a, another witness. And of course, uh, we 
saw the, the John John the Baptist, uh, not the Apostle John. He's the one that's written this gospel. But uh, anytime John is mentioned, it's it's John the Baptist. He doesn't refer to himself as John. Uh, and then the uh, you know now we're going to see how the religious leaders, uh, you know, they they thought they knew everything about the Bible. Uh, you know, they took great pride in, in knowing the scriptures, and. Uh, yeah, they can, and today it's the same way with uh, many professing Christians. Uh, there's Christians out there or professing Christians. They can quote you some scriptures now, more than I can quote, and but their heart is so far from God that, uh, you know, it, it's it's all in vain, you know, and, and it was the same way with these religious leaders, and Jesus is going to expose them for it. But anyway, in verse 31 there, you know, uh, the principle of that verse, he's saying that a man's own testimony is not enough, not sufficient to uh, establish the truth about what he says. Uh, you could uh, rephrase it. If I bear witness of myself, you will say that my witness is not true. You know, I could say something about myself and uh, uh, and you can turn around and tell me, you know, and I might be telling you the truth, but because you don't know me or you don't want to believe me, you'll come back with, well, it's not true, you know, and that happens a lot today. Well, in our political society, especially, but um, you know, he was given into uh, uh, the common guidelines, you know, of being a witness in that day, and uh, we know that because of who he was, that he was telling the truth. But you know, and there's still people today uh, that claim they've read the Bible and ah, blah blah. You know, he's you know, they they tried to turn everything around. They know more than what God knows, or more know more than what Christ knows. But anyway, they won't give witness that, or, you know, when you claim that somebody is who they is, you're being a witness. And people that claim that he isn't who he is, they're witnessing against him. They don't believe. So anyway, his claims about himself, they, you know, they were very disturbing to the Pharisees. Um, you know, we're going to see here next in these next few verses where he's going to uh, uh, present four witnesses to prove that he is the son of God, that he is equal to God. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's already given witness of himself, um, you know, made that claim himself. And now he's going to prove that there are four additional witnesses uh, that he's going to point out to us. And the first one is the witness of John the Baptist. Uh, you know, he introduced John by saying, there's another that beareth witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. And he's talking about John the Baptist there. And if we were to go back in chapter one, where we first started our study, uh, you know, uh, we would see that there was a, a delegation uh, that was sent to John the Baptist uh, to inquire who Christ was. And uh, they looked upon John as, you know, being somebody that was uh, uh, accountable, as somebody that, uh, you know, they that had a, some kind of authority that you could believe what he said. And, uh, um, you know, they... They looked upon him as a, uh, the illuminator of darkness or a burning and shining light, so to speak. And uh, Jesus says of John that he bear witness unto the truth. Uh, we saw back there in the early uh, studies that he firmly stated that he wasn't the Messiah, but that Jesus was the Messiah. Um, and, uh, you know, on the day that uh, he baptized him, he, uh, when he was coming, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And then again, on the next day, he stated, behold, the Lamb of God. And it was also in that chapter that John the Baptist said that the Holy Spirit descended from heaven like a dove and abode upon Christ. Um, and this was the sign, you know, these signs were to prove who he was, uh, that God had given to him so that he would, uh, you know, it was a sign that God gave him that he would positive, gave John the Baptist that he would positively know who Christ was. And uh, again, the Jews, they accepted uh, John's ministry. You know, he was baptizing there in the water of Jordan. And uh, they believed his ministry, uh, you know, was and his person was uh, truthful and authoritative. And uh, so logically, if they believed, uh, you know, they demanded that he accept, you know, if he was demanding that they accept Christ as the Messiah, um, you know, which was the the essence of his message. That was his message. You know, he went to, um, you know, 
before Christ, uh, you know, to prepare the world for him. You know, he was the, the voice in the wilderness preparing the way for Christ. And uh, so if they were, if they believed what he was saying, then they should have, and he was preaching about Jesus, then they should have accepted who Jesus was. But no, that didn't happen, you know, because of the hardness of their heart and their unbelief. Uh, so then we'll, we're going to go on to the next uh, witnesses, verse 36, 37, 38. It says that, uh, but I have greater witness than that of John. This is Jesus speaking. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you for whom he hath sent him ye believe not. And, uh, you know, the, he's talking about the Father being a witness now. Uh, you know, his Father's witness. Uh, you know, he, uh, he was the one that sent him and, uh, you know, and he was doing the same thing that the father was doing and, and what the father told him to do and what the father did. Uh, we talked about that a little last week, you know, uh, how, uh, it's important we as parents, especially fathers, um, you know, um, follow the Lord and, and just not talk the talk but walk the walk because your children are watching you and they're going to learn from you. And, uh, it's not do as I say, but do as I do, but it's, it's both, you know, uh, you are, don't do as I do, but do as I say is what I meant to say. Uh, there's much of that going on is, uh, trying to raise kids and it, it don't work that way. You've got to, they've got to do what you do as well as what you say. And uh, you've got a lot, it's got to line up, you know, so if it don't, then uh, they're all, they're obviously, they're going to do what you do and not what you say. <laughs> so you got to be, you got to be true. You got to be real. Uh, but anyway, um, then he's, he talked about the works, which were again, his miracles, the signs um, that John the Baptist referred to, or John the apostle referred to. And uh, each one saw something shows something special about his character, about the Lord's character. And of course, we know that there were more than 30 miracles uh, performed that are listed in uh, all the gospels uh, that he performed during his earthly ministry. And of course, John only chose a seven. And uh, we've already witnessed a couple of those where he, uh, you know, turned the water to wine and, at the wedding in Cana and he healed the nobleman, nobleman's son. And then there's still five more we're going to come on. Oh, and also the healing of the impotent man. That was three of them. Uh, next, we're going to see uh, the feeding of the 5,000 and him walking on water, uh, healing the man that was born blind and raising Lazarus from the dead. Uh, and these will be the miracles that John, the Apostle John, will record. Uh, but they all bear witness of who he was, who, who he claimed to be. Uh, so we've got, you know, John the Baptist witness about him uh, the father witnessed about him and the miracles were witnesses about him and uh, you know it was a what a testimony uh, that John the Baptist when he said these works announced loud and clear well he didn't announce it but even the witness of John the Baptist says that who Jesus was but these works also announced loud and clear that the father sent Jesus and then Christ further attests to the fact that the Father has borne witness of me. There were three times uh, when the Father's voice from heaven testified of who Christ was. Uh, these occasions were at his baptism, which you would find over in Matthew 3.17, Mark 1.11, and Luke 3.22, uh, as well as in the Gospel of John, and in Christ's transfiguration, which you will find in Matthew 17.5, Mark 9.7, Luke 9.35, and then after his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, uh, which you would find in John 28, we're not going to go back and read all those to save time, but uh, the father verbally uh, spoke, witnessed to his, you know, about his son. Uh, you know, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. It was, was one of them. But, uh, but if you were an unbeliever, as these Pharisees were, uh, because they weren't, they, they already had their mindset that, this isn't him. This isn't the Messiah. Uh, people are being tricked. They didn't hear the Father's voice because they didn't believe. Uh, but those that believe, they heard it and they knew that this was him. 
and uh, and to prove that, if you look at verse seven, he 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 even states, "Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape." You know, the voice of the Father wasn't wasn't going to mean anything to them because of the their heart wasn't prepared by belief. You know, they were cold-hearted, hard-hearted. Um, you know, they just didn't. They refused to believe he, who he was. So, you know, even if they did hear, it didn't mean nothing to them. And, uh, you know, they were just totally insensitive uh, to God's voice. And, uh, and we know today we might not hear that audible voice, that physical voice, uh, but we have the Holy Spirit now. When we get saved, we have the Holy Spirit. And I believe unbelievers even hear the Holy Spirit because uh, of conviction. He'll convict them because God's always trying to draw them to him, to the unbelievers, to be saved. But many times, like the religious leaders, because they don't want to believe, because of hardness of heart, they refuse to listen. Uh, but a true somebody that truly is listening, those are the ones that are uh, precious souls that can be saved because they, they hear and they believe and they act on it. And so the Jewish leaders, re religious leaders, they, uh, you know, they, they didn't hear the voice of God because, you know, he didn't abide in them. You know, he, they didn't have him in their hearts. Uh, they rejected God's son. They didn't believe on him. So therefore, they didn't listen to him or hear him. <clears throat> now to follow on in verse 39, it says, search the scriptures. Here's the final one. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? So we see here that the, the fourth thing, uh, you know, we had uh, John the Baptist, we had uh, um, his works, and we had the, the Father, and now the scriptures testified, witnessed of him. Uh, and he challenged, you know, the, the religious leaders, he, you know, search the scriptures. You know, you don't believe me? Search the scriptures. Uh, and, you know, that's, a, you know, uh, we have to be tasteful and, and tactful about how we witness, but uh, sometimes we have to tell people, look, read the Bible yourself, search the scriptures, uh, pray, you know, have God open your heart and open your mind and your eyes to his word. Uh, but that's where you'll find the truth. There's, there's nothing, everything in this word of God, in this book of the Bible is truthful. There's not a lie in there except for individuals that God testified himself of that, that would lie. But uh, God, God will never lie, and neither can Christ, because he is, you know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, three in one, and they'll never lie to us. So anyway, uh, you know, his, you know, his hearers, the religious leaders, they use scripture to support their system of religious beliefs, or listed, legalistic beliefs. And, uh, you know, his contention with that the Old Testament, Old Testament scriptures, that's all they had at this time. But the Old Testament scriptures, he says, testify of me. They witnessed it to who Christ was, the very Messiah, God's son. Um, you know, I like to go over in Isaiah, and Jeremiah, you know, some of them. But even all the way back uh, to Genesis, you know, he talked about the, uh, his seed bruising, the, you know, uh, the, the devil, the serpent, you know, bruising, uh, or the, the Lord bruising the serpent's head, you know. Um, all through the Bible, the Old Testament, it predicted and foreshadowed, um, you know, who Christ was and uh, prefigured, uh, was prefig he was prefigured in many of their rituals, you know, uh, the sacrifices of animals, you know, that was uh, uh, just a prefiguration of the sacrifice, the once and for all sacrifice he was going to make for humanity for forgiveness of sins. Up until this time, they were still sacrificing animals for forgiveness of sins, which could not take away their sins. They were just forgiven of their sins until the next time the sacrifice was due again. But Christ died for our sins, not just to forgive them, but to take them away from us once and for all 
never to have another sacrifice as long as we believe on him and trust in him and live for him. And uh, his hearers had read, and they even studied the scriptures. You know, these religious leaders, again, they were very prideful in how they knew the scriptures, and uh, but they still rejected God's son, even though they, they cl- made the claim they, they knew the scriptures, and this isn't him, this isn't the Messiah. <clears throat> and, you know, there's several reasons why uh, uh, they didn't, and number one is they didn't have the love of God in their hearts that they made the claim to have. They you know, they were, there were so many of them that were corrupt. Uh, they took advantage of widows and, and people uh, for money, money, and uh, they were in it for power and for fame and uh, uh, popularity. Um, they didn't really have the true love of God in their hearts. And then, too, uh, you know, Christ came in his Father's name, and they received him not. Here, Christ predicted that another would come in his own name and they would receive him. You know, you'd believe somebody else, uh, you know, if he came in his own name, but uh, because I come in the name of the Lord, uh, you don't believe me. And, uh, you know, he announced that Moses was going to be the one that accused him. He said, it won't be, won't be me or the father that accused you. Moses will accuse you. Well, what he's talking about is the Mosaic law. And they put all their trust and their faith in the law and following the law to the T uh, but they still, uh, even though they made that claim, uh, they wrongly interpreted it. And, uh, you know, it would turn around and accuse them. You know, the law that they, uh, they trusted was going to accuse them um, by the very authority which uh, they appealed to. And, uh, of course, you know, he made it very plain that uh, if you truly believed Moses, then you would have believed him for Moses wrote of me. He says, uh, Moses wrote of me, and if you truly believed in his believed in his word and his law, you would have known that I'm the one that he was writing about, and you would believe that I am who I claim to be. And uh, you know, and again, he tells them they really didn't uh, understand his law, uh, and we know that because they added 600 more laws, uh, and they followed those more closely than they did the they did the Mosaic law. That was just backup uh, to justify their laws. And, uh, but either way, the message was the same. Christ claimed to be the central uh, theme, the subject in Moses' writings. And, you know, uh, you can go to Deuteronomy 18.8. That's a good verse that Moses used to uh, write about uh, Christ. Uh, But we're not going to study that for, turn there. Yeah, let's do. Let's go ahead and turn to Deuteronomy 18.18. Deuteronomy 18, 18. I don't have it marked or I have my place. So uh, you can get there just as fast as me, probably. All right, Deuteronomy 18, 18. And this is Moses speaking. Uh, well, it's actually God, but Moses was writing the law for God. And he says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. He's talking, God talking to Moses. And will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And that was God telling Moses, you know, I'm going to raise raise up another prophet like you uh, from among your brethren, you know, from among the Jewish nation, and uh, just like him. Uh, and he's going to put words in his mouth to speak, just like he put words in Moses' mouth to speak, you know, to, speak to, to the people, the nation of Israel. But... Uh, you know, they, they, they refuse to believe, and I just lost my place. <laughs> okay, let me find it. Here we go. And so they didn't rightly understand or accept what Moses read about the Messiah, because if they did, they would know that he was who they, he claimed to be. And, uh, you know, and he tells them, if you don't believe Moses, how can you believe me? You know, because of their willful rejection, and, and it was deliberate, it wasn't accidental. Uh, was not of ignorance. They just they they just refused, willingly refused to believe it, uh, because they took more pride in what they knew than what even the law itself stated. Uh, but they rejected the written word through Moses, and so because of that, they were presently rejecting the living word, which was Jesus, uh, and whose presence he stood. They stood right in his presence, and you know did not believe him pretty sad uh, but we've got people same way today uh, they've got God's written word they've got 
you know, loved ones that are witnesses. Uh, they've seen the changed lives and still they refuse to believe in a, in a living Savior or that Jesus is Savior. They might believe in God or say they believe in God, but they really don't because if you believe in God, then you will believe in Jesus. <clears throat> so anyway, the, the real heart of this judgment is that the Jews didn't really believe the Mosaic message. Uh, I believe we might have finished the scriptures there. Yeah. So uh, that's where we're going to leave off. Uh, we'll start chapter six next week. But, uh, you know, again, uh, these religious leaders, they knew what the Bible said, but they failed to apply it to their lives. Uh, many Christians, same way today, are professing Christians. Uh, they knew the teachings of the scriptures, but they failed to see the Messiah to whom the scriptures pointed to. Uh, they knew the rules, but they missed the Savior. You know, big difference there. And, uh, and they were just so entrenched in their religious system that they refused to let the Son of God change their lives. And many people are that way today. They, uh, they're they stuck in their, their old ways. And, 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 you know, even in church, people are stuck in their own ways and they refuse to let God change them or help, you know, help them to grow. They never grow on their faith. And uh, they, they never bear fruit because of that. Uh, and the question is, whose approval do you seek? Are you looking for uh, approval from the people? You know, the religious leaders, they were uh, highly looked upon by the people of their day, you know, held great prestige. And uh, but their stamp of approval did, didn't mean a thing to Jesus. You know, he, he saw right through them. And the only thing we should be concerned about is God's approval. Uh, you know, it's a good principle for us to follow. Uh, the highest officials in this world can approve of us and our actions, but if God doesn't, it doesn't mean a thing. It's 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 in vain. It's it's useless. But what is uh, important is if God approves, and if He approves, even though other people do not, then we should be content because God approves of us and not what people think about us. Okay, I hope you got something from this lesson. We'll be starting chapter six next week. Uh, we're going to see another miracle. He's going to feed the 5,000. Uh, so uh, we're back in our services again. We had a couple weeks low because of COVID. It finally hit our church family, including our pastor uh, and several others and uh, that are on the men. Well, our pastor is healed and a couple others are on the men. Now Brother Herb uh, and Doris have been confirmed positive. I don't know uh, how bad it is, but pray for them because they're not healthy. And, and this is... Uh, I know Brother Herb's ready to meet the Lord, and uh, but still, you know, we love him, and we, we'd love to continue worshiping with him, but you pray for him and Sister Doris, and uh, we're going to start services again Sunday morning, uh, this Sunday morning, and uh, look forward to seeing you there and, and, and hearing from our pastor what God's given to him. God bless you. Uh, let's close in prayer, and we'll see you in church. Father in heaven. What a joy it is to know that your son, uh, Lord, many witnesses testified who he was. Uh, uh, not only uh, John the Baptist, but those who uh, uh, were in his presence that believed. Uh, we know there are many that didn't believe, and it's still that way today. Uh, we know the Father witnesses for him and that the scriptures testify of him. And Lord, I can personally testify myself that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. He saved me, dear God. He's changed my heart and my life. I'm not perfect. I still make mistakes. But, Lord, I just thank you for a Savior. Oh, what a Savior who takes away the sins of the world, the precious Lamb of God who shed his life on that cross at Calvary, his precious blood, laid his life down, was buried, and arose again for, for our justification. Lord, he gives us life physically. He gives us life spiritually, just as you do. We're praying for a great service in your house uh, Sunday morning, Lord, that we'll see uh, visitors that maybe don't know Christ. We've sent many visitors our way recently, and, and there have been um, people saved. And, Lord, we're just praying for others to be saved. We all have lost loved ones. Uh, I know I do, that I pray for daily. And, Lord, we just pray for the Holy Spirit's conviction upon them that they have no peace, Lord, that they, until they realize without Christ they have no hope. And that they would turn from that sin, a sinful life, and, and receive him into their heart to be Lord and Savior. Just anoint our pastor, use him in a mighty way. We pray for those that need your touch, Lord, Lord especially Brother Herb, Sister Doris, and uh, 
I know Dorothy and Butch Bishop and maybe others, Brother John, um, Brother uh, Gary and Sister Sharon Parker. Uh, we know those for sure have been exposed and are sick. And just pray for your touch upon their bodies. Lord, just give us a great day in your house as we come into worship, Lord. You're worthy of our worship. We love you. We can do nothing without you. And we just praise you and thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Uh, as we continue to serve you, Lord, at Gospel Light Church, just bless us. And Lord, may we uh, win the loss of Christ in your name, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Uh, look forward to seeing you in church. Have a great day. Bye-bye.